Let's continue on with this uh, electrochem thing. Right, okay. So one of the things, we're gonna work a few of these problems now to show you what they might look like. And uh, it's not a bad idea to keep all these little shortcut formulas and conversions in mind. These are not that hard of problems to do. Uh, but there's just a lot of little nuances uh, and a lot of weird little conversion factors that have to be kept up with. And oh, by the way, you can work these. Uh, you don't have to use dimensional analysis. You can use one equation and then substitute the answer to that one and another one. Much as we did, uh, you may recall when we did the uh, calculated molecular weight from freezing point depression, how you could take one equation with one unknown and solve it and then you plug that answer into one that had two unknowns and now it has one and i think that process was repeated twice to get you from the delta t over to your molecular weight if you were not good at that you're really not going to like this chapter because some of these are three and four like that so you have to be able to kind of either do uh, dimensional analysis really well for these are you've got to be able to keep up with with bouncing from uh, one equation to another to another to another okay but the equations themselves as you can see are normally pretty darn simple it's something equals something times something else along those lines so they're not complicated in that sense but they're uh, a lot of moving parts and that's one example. The one that, the last example we worked through was what a dimensional analysis that took four steps and the and the target answer had two unknowns in it. And so that's where we're headed with a lot of these. But it's kind of cool some of the things you can calculate. For example, a one amp current is passed through an electrolytic cell for one hour. How many grams of aluminum would be deposited on the cathode? Well, who would want to know that? <laughs> well, anybody that's doing electroplating would want to know it. Uh, that's how electroplating is is done. And, and we might have talked about that earlier, but you have one of these cathode and anodes. You pump a bunch of electrons in one of the, one of the anodes and, uh, 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 or in, in one of the poles. And then because it's negative, it wants looking for something positive to neutralize it. And what's down in your solution is a solution of whatever positive cation that you want to plate out on that piece of material. So you can, you can plate something out in aluminum. You can plate it out in gold or silver. You just have to dissolve those ions. You have to dissolve that metal and make ions out of them. And then they will go over to that piece of metal into the cathode, right? red cat they'll go these will migrate to the cathode uh the cations will and and neutralize the electron and plate out so that's how that works so a lot of these relate to real world industry problems here okay and this tells you how much you have you've got a one amp current uh right okay so how many grams would be deposited okay so normally you get something like this you have an amount of energy that you're supplying and you have some time component and that probably makes sense, right? It makes sense if you put a current in something and you put a solution down in, say, silver, you're going to plate out a lot more in, in six days than you are if you just stick the probe in there for six seconds. If you leave it in there, more and more is going to plate out. So we normally do have, or a lot of times, we have a time component with these. Okay, uh, let's see. What do I know? As usual, you probably want to come up with some chemical reaction. And there it is. I'm taking aluminum. I know aluminum is plus three. It's a type one metal. It's going to take three electrons and we're going to aluminum. By the way, when it says grams of aluminum, I know we call this aluminum. And like iron three, when you take iron three, your doctor doesn't say, hey, take iron three, take iron but he or she doesn't really mean iron fe because that you don't want to chew on metal that's not going to be real great for your body what you're really taking when you take quote iron 
is you're taking iron three ion or iron two ion. That's what your body can use. If you take just a piece of iron, it's going to, let's see, what's the phrase I was told to use? Pass through, I think is what Tom Dudley told me to use. Okay, it's just going to pass through. And so, uh, so the same is true with electric chem. You have to be careful. If it says grams of aluminum, it's meaning aluminum AL metal. No charge to it. It doesn't mean aluminum ion, you know, at least not formally. So you got to read these in context. How many grams of aluminum? That aluminum right there, AL, is not asking you about AL3+, plus, would be deposited at the cathode. Okay, well, red cat. Red cat is where reduction. Reduction is gain. Okay, I see what's happening. Okay, so this is how I knew to write it this way. It said it's at the cathode. So you have to know your definition for that, right? So you have a cathode here. It's, it's kind of hard for me to draw with this thing, but okay. So we have a cath. It says it's the cathode. Red cat. Reduction. Reduction. Is, so we know it's the pole that electrons are coming into it. And we know we're plating out aluminum on here. Okay, that we know from the way it's worded. Well, it's pretty easy to figure out what's happening after that. This is the part you kind of have to put. Oh, it's hard drawing with a mouse. All right. So what happens is this cathode is obviously in a solution with some ion of aluminum and since there's only one al3 plus i'm guessing that's it so that's my equation so now let's just plug it in and see what we have hmm so we need something with uh let's see so we want how many grams that's our box that's our box okay so i'm going to start out with with when the with the dimensional analysis equation that's got a box and grams on it that's what i want and i'm going to put that over one so that's where i'm starting and i'm just thinking i need something with grams in it and if i don't have grams guess what i'm going to find got it moles as usual you know that's the big prize that we normally are the big path conduit that we oftentimes travel when we're doing these i'm always suspicious of going through moles because the moles are what connects everything but let's see does it give me does it give me grams no it doesn't give me grams oh it doesn't give me moles either hmm so i have to have something to get to grams in here and i don't see what to do i can see how to get to uh let's see i also don't have a time component in grams so i'm gonna have to get rid of this somehow hmm. okay so i'm gonna have to get rid of that and this has to show up and you can see what I mean now. It's not real obvious till you practice a couple of these. But guess what's obviously got to make this happen and this happen, if you just think about it. What's got to make those happen? Where is it at? What's the magic thing? Amp. That's the only other thing you have here. So somehow this thing called an amp has to make my time component go away. And it has to make my grams, or something I can calculate grams from, show up. So does anybody see the answer? Well, it's behind this little gray wall. So here's how it worked. Okay, just your typical dimensional analysis fair. Yeah, I know you can do a bunch of equations and you knock yourself out doing it. Okay, so what was I given? I wanna know grams. So I'll kind of walk through this here, see if my highlight works. So I, I know this is what I want right there. So I have to do my dimensional analysis until that shows up and everything else goes away okay let's see and what am i given there so i've taught you before and i teach my intro chem people box equals star when you do dimensional analysis star is my starting point okay that's kind of goofy but it works okay so box equal star box equal star grams equal amp so now my goal is really i don't even have a chemistry problem much anymore now i just have a, a a brain twister sudoku type of problem it's it's uh oh okay it's uh just a matter of turning this into that 
Okay, so let's see. How are we going to do this? One of the things that you're going to see often in electro chem, and this is kind of a trick, is where you're going to get is usually you're going to get to gram through moles, through that mole hole thing. That's it. And why I like to think about it, if I see grams, I see, right? If you know grams, you know moles. If you know moles, you know grams. Why? Because I give you a periodic chart on a table. Okay. But here's the other thing. Remember, I told you I like to work in moles because it connects everything. And in electrochem, so does C. So look at what I've done here. I remember the little triangle. I told you not to forget that. This is the key right there. Now I can relate Faraday's or Coulomb's to moles, and moles can go to anything. And there's my chain of thought right there. And I'm just going to I'm just going to pull conversion factors from these. Now this is not a one-off. You're going to find a whole lot of problems. Work going from, or I might go from grams to moles to you know how many electrons are passing through. So this is a big conduit right here and this is the little triangle really helps me out so let's make something so what do i know well i can take all three of these. so i know one coulomb right so what is my formula over there which was two all right i gotta move this 267 was this the one yeah so remember these two formulas right here right there c equal a s so let's do a coulomb is equal to an amp second okay you can't so if a Coulomb equals an amp second. I know this is weird, but this is the way I do it. All right, because I can't keep up with all the different. Then if I divide both sides by amp second, what do I get? Coulomb divided by amp second is equal to one, right? Well, what is any conversion factor? And any conversion, a conversion factor is anything that equals one, right? Everything equals one. There's exactly 3,600 3, seconds in one hour. So this is the same amount of time as that, and anything divided by itself is one. So that, by the way, if it was never explained to you, is why dimensional analysis works. Every conversion factor is equivalent to one, and one times anything is still itself. So you're not changing the value, you're just changing the shape. Okay. So notice, I chose this formula. I chose to make a conversion factor out of the units. I just paid attention to the units, right? So what do I have? I know one coulomb is equal to one amp second. All right, so there goes amp. Hey, look what showed up. Second. Now, this is something I do sometimes in dimensional analysis. I do a double line. And that means I'm switching to like another another equation. So each of these, you would have wound up using three different equations to do this, right? Because when you saw seconds and you know you needed to convert that to say hours, you would probably do that off to the side here somewhere and then, and then plug it back in. I don't do that. I'm too amp because this way I can keep up. Okay, so amp went away and now I have Coulomb seconds. Okay, I know seconds has to go away. Well, why? Because it's not in my answer. Gee, so the, my unit of time has to go away. So I need a unit of time. I know. It gives me a unit of time right there, one hour. So this is given. So let me go back and take my highlighter and highlight my given information. That was given. Yes. Okay, I shouldn't be walking through this small. I'm going to go through quickly with the other ones, but I'm just, I'm just walking you through this one-dimensional analysis really slowly, especially since it's a three-tier thing. Okay, so you can see I switch gears right there. That's just, I, sometimes I put a double line to remind me. I'm, I'm switching gears and I'm just going to work on one of these between this one. And I'm going to work on this one after this double line. It just reminds me, it helps me keep up with what I'm doing. Okay, so now I have two units of time, but I know what? I know in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. But now I can cancel it out. Boom. I said I had to get rid of time. I just got rid of time. Why? Because I got rid of time using my definition for Coulomb. Okay, so let's see. Because I know a Coulomb, let me string this together, because a Coulomb is equal to an amp second. Okay. I'll just put an S there. Okay. So this may bring back bad memories, right? 
Remember that delta T equal KFM, and you use that to calculate M molality, and then molality is equal moles per liter. Kilogram of molality is equal moles kilogram. So you knew the kilograms, and now you knew that. So you calculated something else, and then you calculate a molecular weight. So you can see how these are all very simple equations, but I just logically string them together. Now, there's no getting out of this. If you don't use dimensional analysis, you have to recognize these, equa these as individual equations and relationships and plug them in and then get the answer to one and plug it into the other. There is no other way to work it. So some people are thinking, well, dimensional analysis is so hard and this other way is easy. Well, okay, to each his or her own, but I just don't think it's easy keeping up with a whole bunch of equations. This helps me keep up. Okay, so there we go. So in between this, these two sets of double bars, you can see I actually got rid of my time component. So what's left now? I've got to get coulombs over to grams. Well, this is pretty obvious to me at this point once you work these. Why? Because you know coulombs are Faraday's. Either one can be related to moles. And if you know moles, you know grams from, from, from forever. Yep. So that's pretty easy. So let's just work through that process anyway, and I'll show you. Okay. So what do I know? I know that in 96,000 coulombs, there's one mole of electrons. Oh, moles. Yeah, that's not moles of anything. That's moles of electrons. That's why you got to know your thinking equations. You're going to know this is for every one of these, there's three of those. Remember, electrochem, we're counting moles of electrons. Okay, and that's key. Okay, so what do I know? I put one moles of electron, there's 9,600 coulombs. Well, why did I use that conversion factor upside down, as it were? Why didn't I use 96,000 coulombs in one mole? Well, Duh, yeah, because coulombs is in the numerator. And I have to get rid of it because it's not in my answer. It's just real simple to manage now. So that's why I put it in the bottom. And now what do I have? Moles of electrons. And now it gets really easy because I can see moles of electrons. And I can see now I'm finally on grid. If I know moles of this, I know moles of this. If I know moles of this, I know grams of this. It's best. It's back to... It's back to third week, Chem 1411. And so the rest of this is just a Chem 1411 question, right? So what do I know? I know there's that meaning one mole of electrons. But I know there's three moles of electrons. So now I'm taking this line right there. I know there's three moles of electron for every one mole of aluminum. And I know for every one mole of aluminum, I get 26.98 grams. And boom, there we are. Okay, hope that helps. That's a really good one for you to study and know how to do. They're all either that easy, or a lot of them, I should say, are either that hard or that easy, depending on however you look at it. Okay, let's move on. Let's try another one. Okay, calculate the amps. There we go. So there's my, there's my setting up my problem right there. How many amps? Box equals star. And that's one thing I love about these types of questions is they all work with dimensional analysis. It's like a stoichiometry problem. Once I see that, I know it's going to be easy. I could just find me a box, find me a star, and use dimensional analysis to connect the, connect the two. How many amps box? How many amps? That's what I'm looking for. Are required to plate... 1.2 grams of silver in one and a half hours. Okay, so you're in the electroplating business here, right? And and you can ramp up the, the, the number of amps in your electricity. You have a battery there with a regulator. And, and, and you, can, you can turn the knob and change amps. And what you do is you have one a 1.2 gram piece of... Uh, Let's see, you have 1.2 grams of silver, yes, on that plate hanging down into your cathode, yes. So you want to silver plate that. You're going to sink that big bad boy right there. And what you want to do is you want to put silver, you want to silver plate this. And you look at your watch. And you only have 1.25 hours to get it done. It's a very important client. And so that's it. That's what you have. You have to do that in 1.25 hours. Okay. 
Yep. And your experience tells you you need to put 1.2 grams of this silver thing. It's going to take, that size is going to take about 1.2 grams. Yep. Or maybe that's all the, maybe that's all the aluminum that you have in your solution left, you know, is 1.2 grams. I don't know how you came up with that, but you're smarter than I am, so you know. Yep, so there we go. So the question is, well, I don't want to do it too quick or too slow, so how many amps do I need? So that's your that's your question. Okay. As usual, it's going to be a dimensional analysis type thing. And because I can't write, we're going to cut straight to the answer here. Okay. How many amps... I'm looking for amps and let's see what was given. I know eventually I'm going to have to use, so I'm going to show you ahead so you can go back and use the thought process. So there's my three givens. Now it's easy to set this up. If it says how many amps, that says how many amps. That's pretty easy. Equal sign. Your box is pretty darn easy. And your star, where are you going to start? Well, that's a little more challenging this time. Because is your star going to be here or is it going to be here? Normally, it's one or the other. Normally, you take some piece of given data and you start with that. You've got to start somewhere. In this case, you're going to use the same thing I told you how to do those delta G, delta H, and delta S. Where you're giving a certain amount of energy for a given amount of material. In other words, not your mole reaction, but you have to write it down for a specific amount of material. Well, that's what you have here. The trick in being able to work this one, otherwise it's an extremely difficult problem, I think, is to realize this. You have this much material in this much time. You're going to make a conversion factor out of these two. And there we go. You got it. And that's what this is. What does this says exactly this? So this is word speak. And this is math speak. That says what? 1.20 grams of aluminum per 1.25 hours. This you need to see as a conversion factor. And now it's very well, I shouldn't say very simple because I didn't know which way to actually do this. Yep. Do you put the hours on top and grams on the bottom? And my answer is, it doesn't matter. Why? Because if you do this upside down and you get to the answer, guess what you're going to wind up with? Seconds on top and coulombs on bottom. And you're looking for what? Coulombs on top and seconds on bottom. A, I should start all over. B, I'll just take the inverse of my answer. The correct answer is B. Just take the inverse if something's upside down. Okay. So, because, because I wanted to work it correctly, and I'm not muddling through here, uh, I went ahead and wrote it, the, the correct answer. But do realize, if you're ever guessing at a conversion factor, just use the thing. And if your answer's inverted, uninvert it. Okay. An amp. So remember, C equal AS. Well, let's take that same equation here. So you can see that's coming up a lot. So C equal AS. And now I'm just looking at the units. I'm looking at these as units, not as variables. Okay. So what do I know? I know an amp is equal to a coulomb second. And that's how it's normally defined. Well, I'm just going to use that. So why does this work? Because these are all, the values are 1. So I'm just going to use that. Okay. So one amp is equal to what? I'm going to rewrite that as a coulomb second. Okay. Why? Because that's what it takes for me to get my answer. Because this is my, I got to get a unit of time back in here. And because I see I've got to do something with time. And amp doesn't have a unit of time. So I, so I recast amp using this and get me a unit of time. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, and now I'm going to put the unit of, oh, that's maybe how I knew to use it that way, right? Because I can see my unit of time needs to be in the denominator, and so anytime I come up with something, I'm probably going to throw the unit of time in the denominator. Okay, so let's start. So this is a given data, right? 
and this is my box. Yep, and that's my given data. Okay, and that's some piece of given data is always your star. Box equals star. There we go. I'm going to, in between these double lines, I'm going to convert my time over into seconds. Why? Because I need seconds. Because I'm, that's one of my target things. See? I'm a little, uh oh, I need a different color. Sorry. Because I'm looking for time. There's my answer. That's my target. So, okay, that showed up. Okay, lovely. So now what do I got to work on? Okay, so time went away. I'm keeping that one, so I'm going to circle that one. I cross off what I don't need, and I circle what I'm going to keep as in that way. So at the end of this, when am I done with all this mess? I'm done when an S is circled and when a C is circled in the top, and then I'm done, and everything else goes away. So let's see. So now I'm going to work on the numerator. I put a double line, and now I'm going to come back and work on the numerator a little bit. Okay. So let's see how, let me go back to my red. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna start here. I'm trying to get to Coulomb, yes? So what do, what can I know, what do I know? Well, I know that if, if I know grams, I can get to moles, and if I know moles, I can get to Coulomb. In other words, we're taking this thing backwards. We're gonna go this way. I know intuitively I've gotta go this way now because I'm looking for Coulombs. And I'm giving something that relates to a weight or a mole, right? So you're going coulombs to weight or weights to coulombs, one way or the other. Okay, so here we go. So what is this? This is the molar mass. What am I doing? I'm going from grams to moles. Yes. Okay, so it's upside down, but bear with me and you'll, you'll see. Why is this? Because I know if I'm going to get to coulomb, Coulomb relates to moles. I can turn moles into coulombs, but since coulomb is in the numerator, my mole term has to be in the numerator. So I turn it this way. I start here. I didn't cross anything off. I put that conversion factor. Why? Because I know if I know moles of silver, I can go to moles of electrons that silver is going to use. And I know for, because if I know this many grams of silver, if I start out with this many uh, I'm sorry, grams of aluminum get this many moles. This many moles of, right, of silver is going to give me this many moles of electron. This many moles of electron is going to be that many coulombs. Okay, and by the way, in this grams of aluminum, another reason I need to cross that off is I don't have it in the numerator. So it's just easy dimensional analysis. I've got grams, grams to mole. Most the number of electrons, number of electrons to Coulomb. This I keep. Why? Because that's what I was trying to get to. This answer, what I'm telling you is, you need to know where you're headed. That's what tells you where you are on your path. This was the prize. This is where you were trying to head. And you were given information way up here and way down here. Those have to converge at your answer. And they did. Okay. That's how you work a lot of those. Okay, any questions? Let me go back to it. Any questions on how to work those uh, kind of coulomb to amp, the second to grams to mole types of problems? And they're standard fare. They're standard. You know, if you take a standardized chemistry test or a placement test, there's always one or two of those on there.